Ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession is about to enter the hall. We'll be singing the national anthem and you can find the words on page 11 of the program. Please now stand for the academic procession and remain standing for the national anthem. Thank you. I, Catherine Branson, Chancellor of the University of Adelaide, declare open this congregation convened for the purpose of presenting degrees. Distinguished guests, parents, relatives, friends, all family, and particularly the graduates, welcome to this graduation ceremony of the University of Adelaide. Ghana Miena, Ghana Yata, Nadlu Thampindi we recognize that we meet on the lands of the Ghana people. We acknowledge the Ghana people past and present, the traditional custodians of this beautiful land. We acknowledge their ongoing spiritual connection to this place. Graduates, your graduation is an event in which you can take great pride. And I know your family and friends take pride in it as well as do the staff of this fine university who have worked with you during the course of your studies. Graduation day is an opportunity for you to reflect, to reflect on what brought you here and on what your future may hold for you. Whatever that future proves to be, I'm sure that the studies you've undertaken here, the knowledge you've learned, the skills you've developed will stand you in good stead. 
not only, we hope, in your professional working life, but in all aspects of your life. I now call on the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Peter Hoy, to present the candidate for an honorary degree. Thank you, Chancellor. It gives me great pleasure to present to you an outstanding candidate for admission to the honorary degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa, Pamela Ann Dunsford OAM. Pam Dunsford is a pioneer in Australian winemaking, blazing a trail for women winemakers and championing the South Australian wine industry in a career spanning more than 40 years. She graduated from the University of Adelaide in 1973 with a Bachelor of Agricultural Science, ultimately moving her focus from animal science to biochemistry and horticulture as her passion for winemaking emerged. The following year, she was the first woman admitted to Roseworthy Agricultural College, where she succeeded in becoming the first woman to receive a Roseworthy Diploma of Enology in 1974. She worked as a winemaker at Wynn's Winery before studying winemaking further at the University of California, completing a master's degree in 1978. In a string of firsts, Ms. Dunford, Dunsford returned to Adelaide and became the first woman to occupy an important winemaking position in a large company, the first Australian female winemaker to become a wine show judge and one of the first women wine educators and winemaking consultants in the country. In 1987, Ms. Dunford was awarded a Churchill Fellowship to study Method Champenoise winemaking in Champagne, France, to improve the quality of Australian wines. While in France, she became the first woman to be employed at vintage time by the internationally renowned top champagne house, Krug. Returning to Australia, Ms. Dunsford worked as a consultant and lectured at Roseworthy College before joining Chapel Hill Winery where she was chief winemaker until 2006, overseeing 19 vintages. In the 2007 Australia Day Honours, Pamela Dunsford was awarded a Medal of the Order of Australia for her service to the wine industry as an enologist, judge, and promoter of the role of women in the field to business development and to tourism. In 2019, Ms. Dunford was the first woman to be named Legend of the Vine in South Australia by the Wine Communicators of Australia in recognition of her outstanding contribution and service to the Australian and South Australian wine industry. Pamela Dunsford is a key figure in the university's long history of higher achieving women. Her example has paved the way for outstanding women winemakers who are now in the top 10 in Australia and encouraged women to study viticulture and enology and claim their place in the industry. But beyond inspiring more women to follow their career passions, she has made a significant contribution to winemaking in South Australia through practice, research, teaching, promotion and participation. And that contribution is enduring. On a personal note, I also wish to say that Pam was an important guide for me when I was the managing director of the Australian Wine Research Institute. She always gave advice and to the point, and I can see why she has been an inspiration to many. Chancellor, I'm pleased to present to you Ms. Pamela Ann Dunsford, Bachelor of Agricultural Science, Diploma of Enology, Master of Viticulture, Medal of the Order of Australia for admission to the honorary degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa.
It now gives me great pleasure to introduce to you today's graduation orator, Professor Emily Hilda. Professor Emily Hilda commenced as Chief Maritime Division, Defense Science and Technology in November 2020. Prior to this, she was the Director of the Future Industries Institute and Deputy Director of the ARC Research Hub for Integrated Devices for End User Analysis at Low Levels at the University of South Australia. I hope Professor Hillman will tell me what that means when she speaks. Emily is a graduate of the University of Tasmania, where she completed her PhD in analytical chemistry in 2000. Through various positions, Emily's research has focused on the field of analytical chemistry and material science, and in particular on the design and application of new materials that can be used to improve analytical measurements. Her work has led to commercial and field adoption in separation science, bioanalysis, disease diagnosis, environment and food science, defence and national security. Emily is a fellow of the Australian Academy of Technology and Engineering and the Royal Australian Chemical Institute. She has been recognised by a number of awards, too many for me to mention here, but they include the Eureka Prize for Outstanding Science in Safeguarding Australia in 2019. She's also a member of the South Australian Premier's Science and Innovation Council. We are privileged to hear her speak today. Please welcome Professor Emily Hilda. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, uh, distinguished guests, members of staff, and especially graduates. I'd like to begin today by acknowledging that the land we meet on is the traditional lands of the Ghana people and that we respect their ongoing spiritual relationship with their country. I'd like to particularly like to recognise the deep knowledge of science evolved and developed by Aboriginal Australians over the past 65,000 years. This includes in areas of astronomy, navigation, land care, climate protection, physics and chemistry. As some examples, in terms of physics, the boomerang is the first known example of unmanned controlled flight and the leading edge of all aircraft wings is based upon the aerodynamic design of the boomerang. And in chemistry, something very dear to my heart, where aside from their extensive knowledge of bush medicine, Australian Aborigines had discovered how to turn the resin from the spinifex bush into an incredibly strong glue. As you can see in these examples, scientific knowledge in Australia has proud origins dating back more than 65,000 years and much of our current knowledge is derived from it. I wish to congratulate all of you who are graduating this morning. It's a great achievement and one of which we should all be proud. This congratulations extends to your family and friends and all those who've supported you to get to this point. I know from my own experience that, the, that the, many of the things I have done would not have been possible without the support of my family and friends. I realised uh, when I was writing this that it's almost exactly 25 years since I sat there as you do today when I graduated with a Bachelor of Science from the University of Tasmania. To many of you, that will seem like a long time ago, and trust me, it does to me too. I don't remember very much of the ceremony, and I certainly don't remember who gave the occasional address, except that my father told me it was all right. This is very high praise from a man who had a reputation for falling asleep during such occasions. So while I don't expect that many, or maybe any of you, will remember this for years to come, I hope that I may provide some food for thought as you're about to embark on the next stage of your lives. With that, I expect that there are a number of you graduating today who have a clear plan of what you would like to do and where, would you, where you would like your career to take you. There will be others with some less defined ideas and those simply ready to see where life takes you after today. And I just want to say there's no right or wrong answer here. However, the message I would like to share with you today is that while plans are good, they will not always work out and an openness to change can lead to exciting opportunities you never dreamed of. The qualifications you're being awarded today from the University of Adelaide are part of what will open many of these opportunities to you and I hope for all of you this leads to exciting times in your future. Now I share with you that I'm one of those who never had a clear plan for my career. My choice to study science was a pragmatic one based on the assumption it would give me a pretty good chance of getting a job I would enjoy. I realised over time that what attracted me to science is that it is an inherently creative pursuit and with that my passion for science has grown over time such that now I cannot imagine a life without having taken this path. 
While I did say that I did not have any plan, it may be more correct to say that my plan changed a lot as new opportunities presented themselves and I tried to maintain some flexibility. This flexibility has led me to work on nutrient cycling in the Southern Ocean, new equipment that can be used for explosives identification, for countering terrorism, and the development of new technologies to support health and environmental monitoring. It's taken me from Tasmania to Austria to the USA, um, now to South Australia and many places along the way. And most recently, as you've heard, after a 20-year career in academia, academia, I've taken a new and incredibly exciting path to work in defence where I'm now leading the science and technology that supports Australia's maritime defence capability and covers many diverse areas including signature management, material science, sensors, systems integration, human performance, corrosion and much more. These are all areas that are highly relevant for South Australia, a state that is going to play an incredibly significant role in the continuous naval shipbuilding in Australia, both for submarines and surface ships. And it's going to require a workforce with STEM skills such as yours to support that. And it's going to be for a really, really long time. Um, I want to share with you some insights that have come from a, um, uh, some reports written from the, uh, the Foundation for Young Australians, produced um, almost every year since 2015. Um, I really like these reports because they've analysed how uh, disruption to the world of work will have implications for young Australians and, and where we're going in the future. The first insight that I'd like to share is that the analysis in these reports shows that when someone trains for one job, they generally acquire skills for at least 13 other jobs. So my message to you is that no matter how specialised you think your skills are now, always remember that there are many more ways in which these same skills may be applied and some of them you won't be aware of yet because they may not have even been invented. Second, an analysis of over 200 billion hours of work completed by 12 million Australian workers each year was used to predict the skills and capabilities that will matter most in 2030. 2030 sorry. And it shows that by then, automation, globalisation and flexibility will change what we do every day in every job. Now, this is probably comes as no surprise to you and I suggest that the impacts of the last 12 months means that some of these changes are probably accelerated. But what is really exciting about these changes is this analysis shows that science, mathematics and technology skills are critical to this change. And on average, in future, we'll spend double the time at work solving problems and 80% more time using STEM skills than we do today. This is particularly important when we consider some of the big issues facing society that are going to need a scientific way of thinking to identify and work towards solutions, including how we live in a changing environment and reduce our impacts on that environment how we manage our food, water and energy resources, how we can improve health and wellbeing and provide a safe environment for all, the, and the overarching impact of, of new technologies on this. These are just some of the many grand challenges facing us now, and I'm sure you will see many more throughout the next 25 years and beyond. At the time of that first graduation for me 25 years ago, I'd only just learned about the internet, mobile phones were uncommon, and issues such as climate change and managing our energy and water were not being discussed. As an example from my own experience, I arrived in the USA in August 2001. At that time, I was employed on a very small project with an aim to develop a portable device for the detection of chemical and biological toxins. It was a small project because, after all, there was no reason we needed a detector like that. So it was, it was for interest more than anything else. Three weeks later, the terrorist attacks that occurred on the 11th of September 2001 changed everything. Within a couple of weeks of those events, our funding increased from $200,000 to $8 million. I found myself working part of a very large team where the only priority was to produce a handheld detector as soon as possible. It was a situation that none of us could have imagined and despite the circumstances under which it eventuated, it was exciting and productive and a defining point in my career. This is just one of many such stories that I have and others have and shows you um, that where you have such opportunities to do so, I encourage you to embrace these new challenges as they emerge. And even if it means an unexpected change in plans, see that there'll be new and exciting opportunities in your future that you could not imagine now. Occasions such as this are also a good time to, for reflection. This may include reflection about the journey you've taken to get to this milestone today, the sacrifices and hard work that you and those close to you have made to get to this point, or even just a sigh of relief that you've made it. So today I encourage you to reflect on where you may go next, the next stage in your life, what you would like to do and what you need to do in order to do that. 
I also encourage you in whatever you do that you remember to consider the spirit in which you do it, that you respect diversity and the richness it brings to us all, that you demonstrate tolerance and practice inclusion and goodwill to others. This will be just as important as what you do and is key to creating the right sort of future that we all hope to enjoy. Thank you. On behalf of the graduates and their families attending today's ceremony, I would like to thank Professor Emily Hilder for her stimulating and inspiring address. We are honored that you have taken the time to join us on this special day to share with us your thoughts and experiences. Your words of encouragement and advice are greatly appreciated. They remind us that education places upon each of us an enduring responsibility to make the best possible use of our talents and to contribute to the betterment of society in whatever way we can. Please join me in once again thanking Professor Emily Hilder. I will now receive the candidates for degrees. I call on the Vice-Chancellor and President. Chancellor, I, Professor Peter Hoy, Vice-Chancellor and President of the University of Adelaide, certify to you and the whole university that the graduates who will be presented to you have all fulfilled the conditions prescribed for admission to the award for which they are so presented. I, Catherine Branson, Chancellor of the University of Adelaide, by virtue of the power committed to me by the university, confirm that each graduate is admitted to the rank and privileges of a holder of the award in the University of Adelaide for which they are so presented. I call on the Deputy Dean International of the Faculty of Sciences, Professor Simon Pike, to present the graduates. Chancellor. I, Deputy Dean International of the Faculty of Sciences, Professor Simon Pike, present to you graduates from the Faculty of Sciences. To the degree of Bachelor of Science, Leela Amy Barlin. <laughs> Beth Alexandra Bruce. Adam Burford. <laughs> Brian Drake. <laughs> Caleb Lewis Edge. Kimberly Elizabeth Edwards. <laughs> Mahala Ann Ferguson. <laughs> Amy Louise Green. Ka Wei Ho. <laughs> Michelle Helena Kalfas. <laughs> Haley K. Kennedy. Michael Knightley. <laughs> Erica Rose Colts. <laughs> Emily Rose Lewis. <laughs> Brian.
Bore Lu. Also receiving the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Ashley Lauren Maggiore. Emily Rose Milson. Eric Bobastre Morant. William Edward John Nankerville. Mackenzie Silk Nelson Milton. Josiah George Park. Aidan S. Priest. Also receiving the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Benjamin Harold Wright. Peter David Reeve. Thomas Michael Slattery. Brooke Ashley Testy. Heyo Ran Wang. And William John Wesley. To the degree of Bachelor of Science Advanced, Hannah Naomi Agnew. Jack Lauriston Ayres. Natalie Catherine Brown. Sophia Ivanova Budnikova. Anthony Jack Karapetis. Jackson Bryce Dan. Edward Garwood Dawes. Sarah Jane Dilmitz. Ella May Edwards. Sean Thomas Ellis. Alex Charles Harlington. Eva Habel. Sophie Jade Hoffman. Amy Yalak Lu. Chelsea Frieda McCauley. Ellen May Martin. Joe Richard Ian Milne.
Xavier Bernard Monton. Tamika Jane Nash Hahn. Fletcher Clancy Nixon. Amelia Rose Poynton. Taryn Chelsea Ritchie. Matthew John Rohde. Alison Elizabeth Ronfelt. Thomas James Rookie. Rose Virginia Rusinoff. Stacey Jasmine Savin. Josephine Francis Smyrnick. Matilda Southgate. Alexander James Stewart. Sophia Mansioris Taplin. Also receiving the diploma in languages, Elaine May Thomas. Kirsten Anna Wiedemann. and Caleb Wong Han. <laughs> to the honours degree of Bachelor of Science, High Performance Computational Physics, Jack Llewellyn Hopgood. <laughs> and Gavin Wall. To the honours degree of Bachelor of Science, Emily Jane Ahern. Jade Birmingham. Andre Pearson Berve. Georgia Nicole Bolingbroke. Sean Thomas Charles. Shannon Janice Coppersmith. Ben D'Antonio. Lucas DeGarris. Nathan Delavane. Chelsea Louise Dossett. Ryan Andre Edwards. Megan Folwell. Benjamin John Forrest. K. 
Paula Ruth Galash. Sienna Ella Gardner. Samuel Arthur Luke Godwin. Charles Michael Grant. Also receiving the degree of Bachelor of Science Advanced and the Diploma in Languages, Rona Louise Hamilton. Nozat Tabassum Hassan. <laughs> Hamish Benjamin Heath. <laughs> Julia Sophie Lynn Henning. Angus Robert Hesketh. Braden John Hunt. Kenneth Joshua Jacks. Thomas Michael Carbellitz. <laughs> Callum Jack Kane. <laughs> Peter John Keller. <laughs> Alexander James Kelty. Helen Koshida. Brendan Michael Kupke. Vasily Lebedev. Jessica Santina Limangeli. Caleb James Lushington. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Lyons. <laughs> Kelly McDonald. <laughs> Samantha Nicole March. Sonia McDowell. <laughs> Lewis Owen McFarlane. <laughs> Kyle James Nets. <laughs> Shirio Oa. Alex Menelaos Paraskivas. Erin Laura Pickler. Rihanna Lee Power. Edward Bo Sankey.
Kate Louise Shepherdson. Rose Eden Smale. Thomas Douglas Small. Courtney Louise Stocker. Jewel Azaria Tan. Eilish Mary Thomas. Christiane Rose Turner. Shruti Vijay Kumar. Dana Lorraine Will. and Isabella Rose Wilson. <laughs> Chancellor, this, this concludes the graduates from the Faculty of Sciences and for this ceremony. <laughs> Chancellor. Every year, the university presents university medals to acknowledge the most outstanding graduates in each faculty who have completed a University of Adelaide bachelor's degree with honors or bachelor's degree of at least four years duration. The university medals are awarded to them for their consistent outstanding performance across the whole of their undergraduate studies. I, Professor Peter Hoy, Vice-Chancellor and President of the University of Adelaide, present to you recipients of the 2020 University Medal from the Faculty of Sciences. Carla Ruth Galash. <laughs> and Rona Louise Hamilton. I'm now very pleased to present to you Ben D'Antonio, who was presented this morning with the Honours Degree of Bachelor of Science. Ben will now give the valedictory address on behalf of the cohort of graduates who are presented with their awards today. Thank you. It is an honour and privilege to deliver this address on behalf of the graduating cohort today. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate my fellow graduates. We can stand proud of what we have achieved in what can only be described as a year unlike any other. Although for the majority of 2020, we were unable to attend university, meet face to face, and were restricted to working from home, we, can continue to strive, we continue to strive for success, and today's celebrations are a testament to our resilience and determination, making all of what we've endured worthwhile. To our friends and families, thank you for the endless love and support. We cr truly could, have, could not have done, achieved such success without you. I would like to especially thank my supervisor, Professor Bromwell Galandas, my own mother, Tanya D'Antonio, my father, Ralph D'Antonio, and my partner, Madison May Green, who stood by my side every step of the way. I love you all dearly. While today is about, my cele about the celebration of our achievements and efforts, it is important for us to reflect on our journey to this point our ups and downs, and the trials and tribulations we've encountered. I believe success is based on our resilience, to strive and persist, and to sometimes fail but not quit. It is through these challenges that help us develop and grow as both individuals and professionals. And as I reflect on my own academic journey, this could not be more true. In truth, I struggled to adjust to life at university, and my first semester was anything but straightforward. 
After failing my few, first few assessment pieces, I needed to reflect on what brought me to study the sciences in the first place. Ultimately, this allowed me to find a newfound passion for the natural world and brought forth an overwhelming sense of curiosity. In my eyes, the ocean was a place of joy and wonder, rich in history and with significant importance. Yet despite technology advances in technology, we still know very little about life under the waves. As a result, I settled into a degree of marine science, and after finding my place at university, I immediately knew what I wanted to achieve and found myself on the professional trajectory that I had dreamt of as a child. As I continued on this path, the university allowed me to make connections and build partnerships with professionals in my desired field. As a result, I was allowed to work with a variety of NGOs, collaborate with industry leaders, and create a global network. And through these experiences, I gained invaluable experience unattainable in the classroom. During this time, I went on many adventures. I hiked through the jungles of the Cardamom Mountains, setting camera traps to catch a glimpse of those elusive and increasingly rare species. I tracked sea turtles with satellites through the remote and untouched island archipelagos of Papua New Guinea, and most recently I conducted reef surveys throughout Indonesia, chasing what's left of their resident shark populations. Ultimately, these skills gained while studying here at the, at the university have allowed me to live out a childhood dream, and one that made me feel as if I was the adventurer that I gaze upon while setting, settling into a family night on the couch. And although these, although these adventures fulfilled the desires of my inner child, in my mind, my most valued asset that I'll take away from my time at university is the friendships and our colleagues that I've made along my way. All of, I, all of us here know the role of these friends and how essential they were for our success. The ones that would slowly walk through that last concept you couldn't quite understand during that last lecture of the day, or the one that would sit through and help you finish off that final assignment. It would be selfish of me not to acknowledge the tremendous positive impact you all had on my journey, and in return, I hope I had the same effect on yours. Although we may have all experienced our academic journey in different ways, I believe this is one we all share. While we may go our separate ways, venture down different paths, the feeling of belonging and friendship that together got us to this moment, where we, stand, where we join with the many thousands of alumni who will stand here before us and proudly graduated, will remain forever. As we transfer into professional lives, I would like you all to remember this feeling and call upon one another and work together to find solutions for the challenges we face, just as we did while studying at this fine institution. Finally, as our time at university comes to a close, I would like to leave you with something I was told as a child. When I was frustrated or challenged by other individuals, I was reminded that everyone was different, that we all had different strengths, weaknesses, and worries, and that the world would be a boring place if everyone in it was the same. I ask that wherever you may go from here, remember this, because when we collaborate and work together, make decisions based on evidence, ethics, and empathy, we can overcome whatever obstacle stands in our way. To my fellow graduates, I wish you all the best of luck. Be bold, be proud of your time at the university, here at the University of Adelaide and strive forth with confidence as we are now ready for whatever challenges await. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. It now gives me great pleasure to congratulate as a group all those who graduate today. As others have already mentioned this morning, be proud of what you've achieved and remember along the way those who supported you. I wish you every success as you enter this new and exciting stage of your life's path. As graduates of the University of Adelaide, you're not just its alumni, you are its ambassadors. Over the years since this university was established, its graduates have made enormous contributions in this country and all around the world. You join today a community of more than 147,000 graduates of the University of Adelaide who can be found in more than 134 countries of the world. We have 17 global alumni networks and eight international networks. I'm hoping that you will think about joining one of our alumni networks. I'd now like to thank the mace bearer, Rona, and once again the valedictorian, Ben, and all who assisted in the organization and running of today's event. I now ask all of our graduates to remain seated while I invite everybody else who comfortably can to stand and once again join with me in congratulating the graduates on their achievements.
Would the audience please remain standing? And I ask the graduates to now stand for the academic recession. Once the academic recession has left the hall, I ask guests to please all remain where they are until directed to exit by one of university staff. I now declare this congregation adjourned. <laughs>